Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster College. Today I'll be taking a look at a coaster known as the Crazy One or Looney Turns in game, but in real life it's usually called an El Loco. And excuse my language, but these things are definitely very loco coasters, and sometimes also called wild mouse on crack, since they are very small, compact and cheap to build, but still feature some unique elements that you normally don't really see on roller coasters, like some of the steepest drops in the world, some inversions that feature a lot of hang time, and curves that are very tight and even bank outward. There are about six of these in the world and most of them feature a very similar layout with some minor changes and I do want to get away from that a little bit in this tutorial but still show you all of the basic elements of these coasters and how you can get creative yourself with these. Now as per usual I want to raise up my station a little bit, not too much, um, but just enough to get going before we get into the lift hill because I want this thing to curve around a bit before the lift hill. It's not necessary to do it for this type but in this case, because I want to make a very compact coaster, it is something that will definitely come in handy. And I want to get into the lift hill with about three curving pieces and a very, very minor slope, just enough to get the car going. And what I can usually do for this is to build this piece like this, then remove it, turn off angle snap and move the piece down a little bit. There we go. And now we should have a nice little slope in there. Alright, now it's time to make the lift hill, and since these things are so small, they usually also have a very steep lift hill, and while I don't have an exact number on this, somewhere around 50 degrees seems just about right in terms of the size and realism of these coasters, uh, so that's usually what I go for. And we want to build this thing up to a height of about 30 meters. It can definitely be a little bit larger if you want to make a slightly larger El Loco, or maybe a bit smaller if you want to make a minor version. But somewhere around that height is just about what we're looking for. Oh, and quick side note by the way, that means about 100 feet if I remember correctly if you're not using the metric system. And after that, what these things often do is they curve around for a little bit, but it wouldn't be an El Loco if it didn't do that in a kind of loco way. So um, we're gonna first go down just a tad just to get some speed. And after that, we're gonna curve into a completely different direction than you were probably expecting and go in here. And after that, kind of finish the S-Band in the other direction and have a very, very tight curve back into the direction which we came from. Now this is where it's going to get interesting because we're going into the first drop of the coaster here. So I want to make that beyond vertical drop and make that quite small because what we're doing here is we're putting some trim brakes over the first drop to hold down the speed a little bit, make sure that it's not going over that too quickly. And then we want to go beyond vertical and the amount that you're going beyond vertical over here doesn't really matter too much. It can really range from 110 to 120 degrees. Um, but just as long as you have a crazy drop which is going beyond vertical, you should be fine. And you do want to hold those trims just a little bit as you're going into the beyond vertical part. Now that we're done with that, we can release the trims and bring the coaster track back into the ground. And when it comes to the shaping of the drop, all that you really want to make sure is that the top curve is very small and has those trim brakes around it. And then we have a very smooth gliding kind of curve back down into the ground. Now, once I'm on the other side, I want to try and get over the lift hill over here to try and conserve as much space as I can. And this is what usually these things do in real life as well. But one thing to be very careful about is the fact that these trims over here make sure that the coaster starts making speed from about this point. So we don't want to be getting too high on this side and we want to make sure that the track stays low enough that the coaster car can actually clear it. Now, of course, I'm a little bit paranoid about the coaster actually making this. So I want to start a test over here. And while I'm doing that, just happily build away at the curve that I'm making here. And this is something which you don't normally have at this stage of the ride in El Locos, but it's something that you pretty much always have in El Locos. It's an outward banked curve. We want to make sure that it doesn't take this curve with a lot of speed and just kind of throws you out of the seat in the curve, but not too much. So we're going to have to be very careful with the speed there. Um, but as the car is making its way into the testing zone there, I want to have some block brakes over here because these are of course coasters with very small trains and we want to make sure that we can fit a good number of trains on the different blocks in the coaster. 
And there we go. That seems like just about a decent drop. Speed is actually quite good on that curve as well, so I'm very happy with that. And all that's really still left to do, and this is something which you do definitely need on El Loco, since they're very small coasters and very hard to get smooth, is smooth out the parts of the track quite well. And especially here and there where it's still looking wonky, I want to smooth out these parts individually. There we go. It also kind of takes out the banking, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, but I haven't smoothed the entire thing here yet, so I want to quickly do that as well, make sure everything is as smooth as I can. And um, yeah, I can definitely bank that out a little bit again. Smoothing tool does like to get rid of some of your banking sometimes, so what I usually do is just select the unbanked section and smooth it out one last time. There we go. And that looks just about decent. A little bit painful maybe on that transition, but you know, it's it's a crazy kind of coaster. At this point of the ride, they usually feature some outward banked curves into a dive loop, and I want to do something similar to that, but because I already have the outward banked curve here, I'm just going to slightly S-bend my way toward the dive loop. Uh, something which you might notice here is that I turned on my um, banking offsets to make sure that these curves are a little bit more smooth, which you definitely want to make sure with some curves which are actually banked the right direction, um, just so it makes them a little bit more smooth. There we go, and because I'm coming out of the block breaks, I do want to go down a little bit, but not too much, so just about that should be fine. And as always, I'm not really too worried about the smoothness of the track yet. Usually I just kind of lay out where I want my track to go, and then use the smoothing tool to make the final shaping of the track correct. So here, I want to start making that dive loop section. And what these things very often do in their dive loops is feature crazy ridiculous hang time. So I will just let it hang upside down for a little bit over here. And it's gonna pass through that quite slowly. Yup. And then we're basically gonna go down. So let's see how that works. And with some slightly smoother pieces along the bottom, that should be just about it for the dive loop. You can definitely already tell that this thing is already quite a bit more spaced out than a regular El Loco, which are, yeah, usually even more compact than this, I would say. Um, but still, these are really some of the typical elements that you'll find. And especially around here, you should be getting some pretty nice hang time as the coaster is coming around the corner here, getting into that twist, and hanging upside down for quite a bit there. Beautiful. Great, so we've gone down, and it's time to go up again and go to a slightly lower section than the last block break and insert another block break over here and that's really starting to shape up like an El Loco especially with those supports sticking out everywhere and um, smooth out this hill of course some of these hills are really some of the easiest things to make smooth and you can really just select an entire thing at a time to make sure that it's as smooth as possible and it does go through it with a pretty good speed Quite happy with that. So now I think it's time for a section which you also quite often see on these things, um, but only after we have another outward banked curve, because we might as well. There are usually not that many of these on one of these coasters, they are kind of a gimmick, um, but in this case I do need kind of a large curve, so this will actually come in quite handy. And again, since these are banked in a super strange fashion, I do want them to be quite large and spread out and not too painful and then over here I want to get into something quite interesting and it should be yeah there we go it should be going through the supports while keeping the remaining parts of the supports intact so we're reusing the support structure there which is quite handy and we're gonna make a barrel roll that actually goes down which you quite often see on these things and just to make sure that we're maintaining speed I actually want to start moving down here and basically twist the track 90 degrees per piece. It takes a bit of puzzling to get it right exactly, but what we want to go for is that the roll is going to end just before it starts evening out toward the ground again. And that's basically something like this over here. It might look very stupid right now, but this will definitely be quite smooth in the end. Um, so this should work. And we want to even that out at the end. Always watch out with these rolls though, with smoothing it all at once, because as you can see that's gonna 
completely ruin your roll. So usually what I do is select a couple of pieces at a time, make sure that these are all smooth, and after that the entire track of section, uh, did I just say track of section? Ahem, the entire section of the track should be more or less smooth enough to go. There we go. And let's take all the outward banked curve for a little bit because it is looking very awkward there. As weird as these things are, they do have a reputation for being super smooth and while I've never been on one, it's definitely a life goal to do it once and from what I've seen and read and heard from a lot of people, they're actually really great courses for the size that they have. Alright, so we're going down somewhat smoothly there. One thing to note about Planet Coaster though is that there's no continuous roll. Uh, so it's practically impossible to make barrel rolls that are custom like this completely smooth and really this is just about as smooth as you can get. Uh, you might be able to get a bit more smoothness out of it with some trial and error, um, but there's not that much more in there. But anyway, we now have a bit of an issue because what I would usually recommend with these El Locos is to really get them as compact as you can and try for the lower areas of your track because the coaster only dips down to the ground a few times earlier, try to get the lower areas right underneath the taller area. So what I just tried to do is to get a overbanked turn into this space here, if that makes any sense. It's very narrow, right underneath the rest of the coaster, but that ended up removing a lot of my supports and being very small and crammed and not exactly what I was looking for. So in this case, I'll actually move out from the very busy area of the coaster itself. But it's not something that I would always recommend you do because it does space out the coaster a little bit more and make them less compact than they can be. But in this case, I think it's just going to be the best looking kind of option to consider here. So what I'm going to do is build a overbanked, cur uh, overbanked curve as you very often see them on these things. They're not technically overbanked since they don't bank beyond 90 degrees. But hey, it's the, the general idea. So I just want to make a small hill like this and gradually go to 90 degrees as we also go to a 90 degree curve at the top and we go for a straight section of track and bank it about 90 degrees there and do the same on the other side. There we go. Let's see it passing by for a little bit to just check on the speed. Not sure if that shaping is really any good but especially with these overbanked curves or curves that look like it uh, they'll sometimes end up looking very shitty uh, when you've just built them, but as soon as you go over it with the smoothing tool, it should be more or less okay. That's just about the speed that we're looking for, so that's quite good. I do want to bank it a little bit more here to get back into the station, and I think that'll work. Let's smooth it out and make it look a little bit better. There we go, that's already tons better, and uh, just to make the shaping a little bit nicer. I want to do it like this and smooth out the individual parts. There we go, that's quite good. Now since we're very close to the station, I actually want to finish the brake run before we actually connect both parts of the track. So I'm going to have a very, very slight incline here, put my last bo uh, block brake here to make sure that we can run as many trains as we can and have some brakes that slow it down a little bit at the end. And finally, and this is a bit of a, an interesting quirk of these coasters. Some trim brakes that cover the very small hill that is the final hill of the coaster, which you very often see on these things, and that should more or less finish it. This is just going to make sure that once it gets over this hill, it's already going to break a little bit on the top of this and not just barrage into the final brake run at a ridiculous speed. So let's see how this is going to work. Alright, now the pieces are finally fitting here, and just in time for the coaster to make its run. So I'm just gonna quickly look at it off-ride, and then give you an on-ride of the coaster. Now I have to say this is really a general idea of what the El Loco coasters are like. Um, it's a bit different from the standard model, it's actually very different from the standard model, but this is usually also what they do look like with that, uh, that very dominating sort of lift hill that's quite steep, and the crazy amount of supports and support structures right in the middle of the track and the track just kind of interweaving and ducking over and underneath its own track and finally coming back with that very small close to the ground section and hopping into the brake runs just like that. 
It does break a little bit much with those trims though. That's something I might want to look at. Same goes for the trims at the top. Uh, but then again, those trims and block brakes can also help you get the pacing of the track right without having to actually edit the track itself. But I'll definitely slow down these trims at the end a little bit. So they shouldn't be really slowing down the coaster to the speed that we want to have it roll into the station with. So the time has come to write this crazy thing, and something I do want to note is that these things very often seem unsmooth on POV camera because of the way that the camera moves around in Planet Coaster to anticipate curves, just like there on the drop. Uh, so it can seem very unsmooth even if parts of the track are somewhat unsmooth just by how small the track moves around. It is quite hard to make these uh, seem like a very smooth track in the game. But anyway, the speed over here is just about kind of what we're looking for. A little bit slow, maybe on parts like this, but it usually does uh, have a layout which is very slow on those top parts where it does the weird things like having the hang time in the diving loop or having the outside banked curves and having those dips in the middle of the track where it goes to the ground and makes some speed. And um, yeah, that's basically the very standard kind of SNS L Loco kind of layout. A couple of interesting trivia now that I'm busy with this anyway. Uh, this is really just about what you want to do for these coasters and there are uh, different ways that you can just you know use your creativity on these things because they have such weird elements. Um, but this kind of fits into my earlier Arrow kind of episodes which I had before because SNS which is the company that makes these things which I just accidentally name dropped uh, but it's actually a company that bought the rights to um, all of the assets I believe. All of them from Arrow after they went bankrupt, so it's kind of the legacy of Arrow as well, and they have also built the 4D coasters that Arrow has built as well. That's probably material for a later episode, um, but it's quite interesting. And also there is actually a seventh El Loco coaster, which not that many people know about, and it's an El Loco which I believe was only open for a couple of hours. It was built in Tokyo, and um, it was terrible. It was actually built by the Japanese branch of the company, um, or actually a company which bought the entire SNS company, um, and it didn't turn out all that well, even if it had some of the classical SNS L Loco kind of traits to it. So these things, as weird and small and quirky as they may be, are actually some very well-respected coasters with some very interesting elements and provide a very thrilling experience on a very small part of ground and even for a very low price. So they're really one of my favorites. I would love to ride one of these someday. It's definitely on my bucket list to do it. And yeah, this is basically one of the El Locos. Also, by the way, interesting trivia as well. This is actually not the standard El Loco car. These are the extra large ones, which I believe uh, were originally used for the Green Lantern coaster um, and they're kind of seen as the standard El Loco cars in the game now but the standard El Loco cars are actually even smaller than these ones so they are really really small quirky coasters Anyway, that's probably enough long coaster rants from me for today I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and learned something from it and I'll see you in the next video